It's finally happened today. I've given up Dropbox. So it's been a long time coming. Ever since they started limiting the free tier to only include three devices. Uh, this happened, I think, sometime at the end of uh, 2018. And I've just been like, all right, I've slowly been transitioning crap off Dropbox. But finally, I'm like, I'm making the jump to Nextcloud. So this jump looks a little bit different from everybody. I'm going to show you how to set up a server with Nextcloud today. I personally have uh, my Nextcloud hosted in the rack behind me. And how I'm handling that is it's all being served from my internet. So if I lose internet, I lose access to this uh, these documents. And my solution around that, let's say I have a prolonged outage and I'm out of, uh, you know, let's say I'm out of the state or something crazy. Uh, I do have nightly backups kicking off for my next cloud. So I might have like a one day revision behind. So uh, these backups are doing uh, being done with Backblaze because they're the cheapest out there. I can get that under $5 a month with the actual uh, back and forth up there, which is pretty awesome. Some people opt to go with a VPS, which I'm going to show you uh, mainly this portion of it but you could also do this in a vps and i'll leave a link uh to the actual sponsor of this video nextcloud down there they'll give you a free 25 dollar credit you can use that or if you already have like a free tier from google cloud platform you could also use that uh, it just depends on what you're feeling uh, as far as following this along so again i don't really have a preference i think both are all three of these solutions are great and you just choose what you're comfortable with but with that, we're going to jump over, get to the server, and then we're also going to set all this up. So I'm going to be using Ubuntu 18 for simplicity. I want this to be a very short install and to the point. So that is why I'm choosing that, even though I'm not a huge fan of Ubuntu. I do like the simplicity of Ubuntu server, though. So we're going to use that with a snap. So I know I'll hear about that in the comments, but that's okay. Again, this is more for the everyday man that just getting in and they just don't know how to really, really get into a, a Linux based server and, and fiddle around. So uh, this is just for everyone else out there to use it. Obviously, if you're already uh, pretty versed in this, you'll probably want to install it a different method, but that's far more complex than today's method. This video is brought to you by UpCloud, superior cloud hosting with data centers around the world. They have a 100% uptime guarantee, and if you must access your data all the time, I highly recommend them, and you can use them to follow along in this video. Link is in the description. Let's go ahead and create our next cloud instance, and this is where we're gonna drop all our files. Now, uh, I'm doing this locally. You can do this on a VPS but it just depends on what you want. Most people, I'd recommend a VPS, uh, but for me, I'm gonna do it locally and then back it up from uh, my local backups here because I want my data physically here. Now, I have uh, this, I'm gonna create my virtual machine in this. You can vir create your virtual machine using uh, VPS. If you'd like to follow along and create your own VPS with storage, you can use the UpCloud link below. You get about a $25 credit and uh, that'll get you going for probably about a month or two, uh, depending on the server you pick. Obviously, uh, you can run Nextcloud on pretty much nothing. So I do probably the cheapest server. It's just the storage that really costs you. So if you're going to be storing a lot of information, uh, just know that that's going to run you a good bit on a VPS service because that's where it is. So we're going to create a new virtual machine. Um, I'm just going to use this for the virtual machine, but you can follow along and create your own virtual machine in a, a VPS. So we'll do master pool and then I'm going to just do an Ubuntu spin. We're going to do Ubuntu 18 and I'm going to fill this information in. So for the size, I recommend starting out at probably about 50 gigs. Um, you can do this on a VPS. Most VPSs charge about 10 cents per uh, gigabyte. So 
uh, this would run about five dollars in most instances just on average i mean that's not obviously up clouds charging or google's price sheet it just depends on what you're doing because we're going to be accessing the storage a lot i just want to kind of throw that ballpark number just so you got a good idea so don't throw like a terabyte at this if you're not going to use the entire thing because you will get charged in a virtual private server setup. Um, I know on my Google Cloud platform, I think it's like seven cents or something in that nature. On UpCloud, I think it's even it maybe even a little cheaper. Uh, but just check to make sure what it is because these prices fluctuate all the times. And I like to just throw out 10 cents per gigabyte just so I throw that in my mind. So I know this is about five bucks. So I got about five bucks of storage per month. And that just kind of goes, okay, 50 gigs, five bucks. And, and I have that correlation. Now, this is on my home network. So technically, I can go a lot higher because it's all my actual hard drive back there. So uh, just know that that's what uh, I'm doing in this video. Okay, so here is the initial boot of our fresh server. And we'll want install Ubuntu server, and then we pick our language. Okay, and then we're just going to walk through this real fast, the actual setup. Choose our language, and it'll identify everything. We're good. Install Ubuntu. And we're going to go ahead and hit done here. Uh, we're not going to use a proxy. Probably won't either. Mirror, we're going to use the entire disk. And we're going to use all 50 gigs. You'll probably do the same setup for your VPS uh, instance if you're, you go that route. And we're going to hit done. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And then we'll set our actual name. I'm going to call this one um, Nextcloud. Server name, Nextcloud. Your name, um, and then Nextcloud. This might get a little confusing, but just remember if it's your server or username, Nextcloud. Probably should have put Nextcloud dash server for the server name, actually, just so we have some difference. Uh, and then we'll choose our password. All right, so this is where we choose some of the server snaps. Now, Nextcloud, you can install the long way. I'm just showing the quick and dirty way in this video. There's plenty of other videos out there that show the entire install if you don't want to use Ubuntu 18 snap, uh, which it doesn't really matter. So in this instance, I'm just going to do that and hit done this is definitely the lazy man way to go about things but at the same token you're not really going to be in here doing much and this is a bare bones ubuntu server install so nothing i'm really concerned about it gets the job done and is great for a newbie setting this up okay now that it's installed we'll just go ahead and reboot Okay, so now we've got in Nextcloud server installed. Now, if you launch this on a VPS and you don't have the options during the Ubuntu install, which most VPSs just launch you into a basic uh, Nextcloud uh, or basic Ubuntu server instance like this, uh, you don't really want to just go ahead. You're not going to be able to follow along. So make sure you do snapd install Nextcloud. So the first time you get up, and, and since the next cloud's running in, in like a snap instance, it's weird because you get to the command prompt and then it'll start loading some of this gibberish here. I actually just hit enter a couple times after I finish that uh, scrolling text and then I get my login again. So from here, we'll just sign in using our actual uh, login ID. So we'll just go next cloud and then just our login. And what this does is it just logs us into our brand new Ubuntu 18 server with Nextcloud and we can go ahead and configure some stuff. Now you can change like the ports and stuff like that. So if you're already reutilizing an existing server you have deployed, uh, you can definitely change the server port. So let's say you need to host a website, but you also want to run Nextcloud on that same uh, box. That's totally okay. You can do that. Just know uh, you need to make some different configurations. And I'll leave a link down below if you need to make custom configurations like that. Because it's just a simple command to change the HTTP, which is by default on 80, port 80. And then also changing the SSL or HTTPS to a different port by default it is 443 which is the standard so if you do need either one of those ports you can change nextcloud to work on different ports however i'm not going to do that in video so once our server boots up we have nextcloud by default because it's just an installation option on ubuntu 18 we just simply go sudo apt update and then go ahead and do an upgrade as well 
because a lot of times these images are a little bit out of date and I like to make sure that everything is completely up to date. That's the first thing you do on any new server build is do your updates, just make sure everything's good and clean and then we can finish the actual configuration in our web browser. Okay, so we finished with our update and now I just rebooted and this is what you typically get. Uh, it gets the login screen and then you get this little snap uh, initialization. Most times I just don't care because I te technically I'd never really come back to the server. So if you're standing this up in a VPS, again, you rarely ever log into it once it's initially set up except to maybe expand space and that type of thing. But for this, we're pretty much done. We've installed our next cloud just using the default options in Ubuntu 18. And then we just simply did an update and upgrade and then just rebooted. So from here, let's go ahead and hit uh, the actual IP of this server. So uh, I'll go ahead and log in and just pull it from an IPA. And we're at 192.168.69.217. So I want you, we've established that. Now, if you're doing this for this video, I'm not going to actually do it, but uh, if you are, definitely set a static IP. If you don't know how to set a static IP in Ubuntu 18, I've made a video about that and I'll link it up at the very top in the title card and also put it in the description. But it basically uses NetPlan, which requires you to edit a YAML file in your ETC. If you don't know what that is, watch that video. It will explain it all on how to do a static IP. So now that we have our IP, we're going to go ahead, type it in, and we're going to pretend this is a static IP. From here, we, we get this. And we're going to go ahead and just say, okay, username and password. This is creating an admin account. So we'll, we'll create something super secure like user and then for the password we'll put something also very very secure and i don't need to actually tell you that you should have a really really unique username and password especially if this is facing the internet which in most cases it will be so if you have like just a regular dictionary password get something better i i, I just can't tell you that enough because this will be forward facing almost every next cloud instance should be forward facing because this is a dropbox replacement which means that well it's replacing dropbox so it, it's going to be facing the internet because you're going to want to use it on your phone you're going to want to use it on a computer let's say you visit a hotel and you want to log in you can do it there you can do it on your laptop uh, wherever you're at in the world you want to hit this server and it's really important that you have ex uh, that it's accessible for you. So with that, we log in, you're presented with just the B default stuff. And now you can start adding your next cloud clients. Now this can be a uh, next cloud client on windows, Linux. Uh, they have it on my phone. My, my Android phone has it. I mean, every, everybody has this client. So it's very easy and very much like Dropbox once it's initially set up. So from here, uh, we're pretty much done. Now, if you're setting this up on an internal environment like I have here, it would actually be pointing. You need to point it and, and poke a hole in your firewall and do port forwarding. I'd love to show you that, but the fact of the matter is everyone's router, everyone's gateway is different. I could show you mine, but chances are probably 99.9% .9 of you will have a different set up because I use a custom PFSense router. So uh, you need to do the port forwarding to here. Now, when you're port forwarding, it needs to be port 80 and port 443. You forward those and you're good. If you need different ports, again, check the article as far as uh, what's in the description and they'll show you how to actually change the port on a snap. So, very important. So, from here, this is the basic setup of Next Cloud, and you can start converting, dragging and dropping all your Dropbox folders. Now, I would recommend just picking one folder just so you make sure uh, you're not completely relying on it right out of the gate. I've taken almost like a couple months just to get acquainted to it because there's some... Uh, 
really cool features, but you also got to make sure your network's stable. And if you're self-hosting like me uh, right here at the house, then of course this, uh, if you're pushing it to a VPS, obviously you don't have to worry about downtime, which is really nice. Uh, but again, you're paying for that luxury because you have to pay uh, the monthly fee on the VPS service. That's why I self-host that. And I have a lot of stuff in my Dropbox. It's, you know, probably 30, 40 gigs worth of stuff. And um, I don't want to pay, it'd probably be about 10, 15 bucks on a low end VPS server, at least from UpCloud, uh, Google Cloud Platform might be a little more on the storage side of things. But if you can get away with a micro server, you might even get it cheaper, depending if you're eligible for their free tier. So it, it just depends on you and what you use. But I, I, I say, hey, try them all, figure out which one better for you, uh, because I use literally almost all these VPS servers for this and that. Now, other than the basic setup here, it does have a lot of add-ins like bookmark syncing and other uh, features, which I will probably touch in future videos when I de-Google my life. Most people know that I take all my notes using Google, and I also do all my bookmarks, and I have a huge reliance on, on Chromium or the Google Sync, which I'm also trying to break myself by uh, using the NextCloud Bookmarks plugin, which I will be doing some syncing and importing in and, and slowly converting that over. But that's going to be a future video for this one. I just wanted you to get the basic files uh, to, to get uh, the conversion done for NextCloud to Dropbox. So with all that said, that is the move from Dropbox to NextCloud. This is mainly just the setup, the actual sync. All I did was just kind of take all my Dropbox data, dump it in my NextCloud, uh, sync it up and then I just let it run uh, a couple days just checking my backups um, and, and just I recommend if you're doing it on site having that external cloud backup uh, if you're very paranoid you can encrypt that data I was using uh, our clone which was an actual uh, command line base so that was a little complex setting all that up with a, an actual bucket so that's why I didn't include it in this video However, uh, mileage will vary. You can choose your backup method of choice. I do recommend offsite for this, obviously, to really get that true replication between it and uh, Dropbox. So uh, with all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Uh, I am going to continue this series and do like a NextCloud plugins and other things that I'm using to kind of decouple myself from the cloud as far as Google Cloud. Uh, I want to remove like bookmarks, switch out my browser, and some some other things coming up next. I just wanted to make this quick setup video and kind of show you how I've switched from Dropbox to Nextcloud and Nextcloud is going to facilitate a lot of other things that's in my orbit as well. And if you're interested in decoupling from big data, you can definitely do that using these kinds of tools. But again, with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section and a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.